there. Thanks for joining me to take a look at this Camillus unofficial scout knife from the 1940s. Uh, these are not that rare. They can be found pretty easily and they're not expensive either um, depending on what condition you want to get one in. But uh, Camillus made a lot of these. They're just kind of a standard scout knife but I like them for several reasons and the first being I really like the shield. Here you can see it says scout and then you have two semaphore flags. Now you may not be familiar with semaphore in this day and age of wireless communications, but it was a way to signal at distance. And uh, you'd have two flags, two special flags, and depending on how they were held, they would indicate either letters of the alphabet or numbers. So you could signal someone far away. And that was taught to the scouts. The scouts uh, had that as a skill and did that for fun for a long time. So I think that's just a really cool thing to put on the shield. Uh, the shield is nickel silver. It's set down in either celluloid or Bakelite covers. I'm not really sure which. I want to say Bakelite because it just seems a little different than celluloid to me. And it hasn't shrunk or cracked. But I really don't know. Bakelite was used from like 1925 to 1950. This knife is from the 40s, so that would fit. But honestly, I've, I've seen some of these too with curled, shrunk scales, you know, and that could mean they're celluloid, so I just don't know. Uh, nickel silver bolsters that are threaded. Uh, a steel bail, interestingly, not nickel silver. One visible brass pin uh, through the uh, back spring. And the way the these worked, they actually punched on to little push-outs in the brass liner. Brass liners on this one. But curiously, a steel divider and a steel spacer here. You know, carbon steel parts and blade. So that's a look around the outside. Let's take a look at the main blade first. You know, carbon steel, spear point, crescent, nail pull. Um, you can get these things razor sharp, and this one is, trust me. I won't demonstrate it, but it's scary sharp. Uh, this one has the four-line Camillus tank stamp. It says Camillus, first line, Cutlery Co., second line, Camillus NY, third line, and way down there, USA. So according to Goins Encyclopedia of Cutlery Markings, that would date this knife from 1941 to 1946. I found out that if you have that same marking on all the blades, according to that book, your knife could be from 1919 to 1941. But here it only appears on the main blade. I have a couple other knives with that marking, so I'll just show you my other old Camillus knives. Uh, here's a uh, Navy utility knife from World War II. It has the same tank stamp. And here is a Army engineer's knife from World War II. Also with the same tank stamp. You can see and learn more about those two knives in my award-winning video, uh, Five Military Pocket Knives. Such an imaginative title. Back to this knife. A um, couple of the tools that I think are just really kind of, you know, not unique, but they're pretty funky. And one of the reasons I wanted to get this knife, and the first is on the can opener. So if you didn't know what that was, it tells you right there, can opener. But that's a blade-style can opener. You don't see it too often. It's an older style. Camillus would use it, and also Utica and, and Utica's Cutmaster brand use that a lot. Um, but it's the kind where I think I'll demonstrate it. I'll get a can. We'll do it at the end of the video. But you turn it this way so it won't collapse on you, and you push it through the top of the can. Then you pull it back up, flip it over, stick it back in there, and you put this over the lip of the can, and you start pulling up and going around the can. At least I think that's how you use them. We'll give it a shot. That's uh, I've only got one other knife that has that old style can opener on it. It's not really an old knife. I think this is from 2007, but this is a Shad and Morgan from Queen Cutlery. And I just think this knife's a stunner. 
as I just took an excuse to get it back out. Um, I think this is the prettiest scout or camp knife I've ever seen. First of all, it's kind of rare to get them with staghorn scales, and these are just wonderful. Anyway, um, this one also has, you know, that old style, blade style can opener. I call it a saddleback or swayback can opener. Um, gotta be very careful. This one's really sharp. There we go. Um, yeah, probably the most dangerous thing is just getting it open. But uh, yeah, obviously these weren't common when this was made, but they it was kind of a throwback. I think kind of a representation. That knife is just I love that. It's never leaving the collection. Another tool on this knife that I think is really cool is the awl or punch in that it's spiraled and it even tells you right here. Spiral punch. <laughs> so I guess that was kind of a big deal. I don't know. Um, it reminds me of this New York Knife Company Hammer Brands knife I have. This is an official Boy Scout of America's knife from the late 20s, early 30s. And uh, it has a spiral awl. And they patented it, patented this one, so maybe they were first with it. I think they did a little better job with it too, but it's got a nice half stop. So anyway, um, the only other tool is uh, the screwdriver cap lifter, of course, and um, nothing much to say here. It's standard. It's what you call the kind of short, stubby kind. It's just that the old ones are great. You know, they're thick, thick to the tip. You really don't have to worry about much about twisting them. And they, they were really pointy right here. So in my experience, they pop that bottle cap first time every time. And I don't know why they can't make the modern ones or on the modern knives a little better. Yeah, so just a word about Camillus. They went bankrupt in 2007. Camillus Cutlery Company of America went bankrupt in 2007. You can still get Camillus knives, branded Camillus. They're modern folders. They're made in China. Um, but Camillus was an old company. It actually traces its roots back to 1876, but it didn't become known as Camillus Cutlery Company until 1902 when Adolf Castor and his brothers bought the company and renamed it. Uh, recently I got another uh, milk or demo knife. I wanted a more modern one to compare against my uh, World War II version. And I kind of thought about getting my birth year. Well, that's 1958 because I'm an old guy. Uh, and 1958 is kind of a hard year to get for these. Uh, 57, 58 when they were reintroduced after being stopped after World War II. And so it's a really popular year for people that are trying to collect the years. At that time, when they came back, 57, 58, they started putting the date on the tang. And so I thought about what date to get. And um, I thought, you know, my birth year really doesn't mean anything. You know, why would I care about this knife when I was born, zero years old? So um, I ended up getting 1976 for a few reasons. First of all, if you remember, that's the United States of America's bicentennial. And if you were around back then, you remember that was a pretty big deal. Uh, Camillus also gives that as their centennial. So uh, back in 1976, Camillus was putting out 100 year anniversary knives. So I thought that was kind of neat. It's also the year that I became uh, of legal age, turned 18. And um, I guess I could have enlisted uh, there was no draft at the time. You had to register for the draft, but uh, the th fortunately for me anyway, the Vietnam War had ended uh, a year or two earlier. Anyway, another Camillus knife. Yeah, so this is kind of a World War II era pocket knife, and um, it's not the greatest quality. Uh, you know, these springs and liners across the back here are not very flush. Um, of course, it's very old now, but it has a uh, lazy spring on the pile side. Very, there's no snap on these tools, unfortunately, you know, on the main blade. I mean, it stays in position and everything, but there's no snap. Um, just kind of a tired old spring. But, so, during World War II, these U.S. knife companies were emphasizing 
quantity over quality. They were cranking out millions of knives for the armed forces, and I've read that the quality never really recovered after World War II. And from my experience, that's true. I think that your pre-World War II uh, vintage pocket knives just have a, a little more attention to detail, a little better hand craftsmanship. Yeah, so in closing, I just think this is a really cool knife, cool shield, some cool tools, uh, you know, kind of unique. Put them all together and uh, a little different. And it's in really great condition other than the weak spring there. Uh, it's very clean, sharp, just visually appealing. So I'm glad to have it in my collection. I hope you've enjoyed watching that and have fun collecting.